Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 you with me it's talking about our Lord Jesus Christ over here and now let's read therefore since we have verse 14 since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens and mind you he gone through how did he go through the heavens by facing death first death coming to earth in the form of flesh submit to God the Father to the point of death and then resurrected and right to heavens okay Jesus the Son of God let us hold firmly to the faith we pro profess for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who has been tempted in every way every way wherever you feel inside the temptation the trust you feel it okay I want you to know that just as we are yet was without sin yet was without sin so let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need now let's take a, some time to ponder about this verse we are talking about the high priest of God Lord Jesus now now before the Christ came what is the responsibility of the high priest in the Old Testament first he goes into the presence of God on behalf of his people representing them so he is like a mediator between God and man all right then he performed the sacrifice of sin the shedding of blood for who for himself and for the people of God and that through that sacrifice the Lord himself revealed to him and to his people but now we are not talking about this human high priest in the Old Testament we are talking about a higher order the priests of God our Lord Jesus Christ who is blameless and sinless he is the high priest of God in human form now now the Bible says over here he sympathizes with our weaknesses meaning he doesn't just know that we are tempted he could feel all the temptation that we are going through now and he went through it himself he knows the limitation of the flesh and the evil that is coming against us every moment with every trial and yet he was without sin now you must understand the spiritual implication here yet he was without sin now you ask the question why did he has to go through that two reasons okay write it down two reasons why did he has to go through it this way first to show you and I that he knows exactly how much we struggled and suffered in the flesh now that is essential for the high priest Jesus to intercede for us in all things even now in the heavenly throne if he wants to intercede for us how does he intercede he has to feel for us he has to sympathize empathize knowing every kind of temptation evil is coming against us every moment demonic influences he has to sympathize it's not just sitting right there on the throne folding his arms and praying you know, I know you are tempted no not that kind of thing he's our head we are the body so when we suffer now the head can feel it all the time you got what I mean so for you and I to know that that he can feel it that so what I'm trying to say now is sometimes just a sidetrack we intercede for people do you know why your intercession is not powerful why <laughs> why it's not powerful why it doesn't change anything because you don't you don't empathize with your brethren <laughs> enough that's the reason you know you cannot empathize you don't know what they are facing you don't even know the evil that's coming against you much less knowing the evil that's coming against them you don't understand their helplessness their problems their struggle you don't understand that that's why your intercession is not powerful okay I'm telling you now that's why when God subject us to certain trials in our lives why people why for you to feel for the people of God truly all right there's one thing he has to go through it second why do he has to go through it by going through trials and all the temptations and yet it was without sin our Lord Jesus has inherited that right to become the sacrifice for our sins the sinless one for the sinful understand that 
So that means there is no sin he couldn't forgive. There is no wrong, no mistake that he could not overturn. There is no sinner that is too ugly for him to look at, to redeem. All right? There is always enough mercy. That's why the Bible says, Come, you sinners struggling in your problems, in your weaknesses, come approach the throne of grace with confidence to find help and mercy in times of need. Amen? Amen to that? Okay? So, there is only, listen, Christians, so with that, there's only two ways that we have trampled the Son of Man. How do we trample the Son of Man? By trampling on His grace and mercy. And do you know that we, a lot of times we are unknowingly trampled on His grace and mercy? Through what? Through number one, number one, by not coming to Him in your sin and weaknesses. Listen, when you are weak in your flesh, you moan and groan, and then you become more and more self-absorbed. You know you couldn't get out of it, and then you keep on feeling lousy, feeling self-absorbed, feeling self-pity. Now, you're doing all these things, but you're not approaching the throne of grace. What's the use, people? What's the use? Now, you see, you, if you are doing that, if you are doing that, that's as good as covering yourself with the fig leaves. You're covering yourself. Feel accused. Feel lousy. Self-pity. Or sometimes self-righteous, you know. Like, but you're still not coming to Him. What's the use? You trample on grace. You know what I mean? No. Unknowingly, a lot of Christians doing that because they don't understand what the high priest has done and what he said here. The second, how do you trample on the grace and mercy of God? Listen up. How do you trample? The second, by not struggling with your sins. By not struggling with your sin. Now, sometimes you may feel you are not winning over sin. Now, you feel you have been in sin for quite a while. But don't stop struggling. You know why? Because every time when you struggle with it, sin is losing its strength progressively. Losing it. Do you know that every time you struggle, sin is losing its strength at the same time? Okay? I, I struggle with my sin and flesh every day. Because that old nature will come alive every day. The new needs new ideals, new motives just come up every day, you know, in our lives. Some people are not conscious of it, but if you're conscious of it, you struggle with it, okay? And when you struggle, I know, you have to know, you struggle with sin. Some people don't, don't see the need to pray because you didn't see sins coming again, demonic influence coming in. How prone to lust is your eyes, is your flesh. How prone to be self-absorbed and, and self exalt you know, no. Self-pity. How much you lean upon yourself. You didn't see that. And when you see that, you see the need to pray. 